Apostle Richard Kwekupaka, uh, Toronto, Canada. Man of God, you're looking very good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well by the grace of God. I am so... looking very good, man of God. I salute to Adeg, I salute to I salute. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Apostle Dr. Richard Kwekupaka, man of God. So how is the family? The family, we are doing well by the grace of God. God is keeping us safe from every weapons of the enemy so we are doing well in jesus name thank you and how is ministry also ministry is flourishing because the bible says jesus said that he will build his church and the gates of hell cannot prevail even though we are in a time of pandemic but the churches or the church that jesus christ has built is still standing strong and marching forward so i would say ministry is doing well but can we admit that coronavirus has really shaken the foundations of the church? Yes, it already it has shaken the walls, but the foundations still stand strong. But the walls of the church has been shaken, but the foundation is still standing stronger. I like that because the foundation is Jesus. That is unshakable. That's I like that. It. God bless you. God, that God bless you. Amen. Man of God, I won't waste your time there. The, the body of Christ is under attack. Christianity is shaking. It's like mm. there's, a, there's an earthquake. It's shaking yes. everywhere. Mm. But as knowledgeable as you are and invested as you are as a priest, what do you tell believers now before I go to my main topic? What, what, what advice would you give to believers that are confused and wondering what is happening? What do you tell them? First of all, thank you, man of God, for the question that you have thrown to me right now. What, I would tell to, to, uh, what, what I'm going to say to the believers, it is in Isaiah chapter 41, the verse 10. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Mm. So I would like to encourage all believers out there that they should not be afraid of whatever is happening. They should know that God has never changed and will never, he will not change. He still stand by his word. And we are under a divine covenant. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 91 verse 10, 11, it says, there's no plague come closer to us. So I would like all the believers to know the pandemic will come, the attack will come. But as for us, it shall never come near us we are covered. We are under the center of God. Amen. Amen. Man of God. Then also, I want to go, I want to digress to this particular topic. Bless you. When the Bible says Jesus died, before Jesus would die, all the enemies of Jesus, all they were waiting for was the news that they would kill him. They were waiting to kill Jesus. Yeah, then one day they said Jesus had died on the cross of Calvary. Everybody was happy. For the three days that Jesus laid dead and nobody heard from him again. Now the news was gone. There was no miracle anymore. There was no preaching. There was no deliverance. Papa, while Jesus Christ laid dead for the three days, I want us to run through the mindset of the enemies of Jesus. Can you talk to us a little? What do you think the enemies of Jesus were thinking? Man of God, God bless you for this question. First of all, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2 verse 7 to 9 there's a specific powerful word of god there but i would like to read the the verse um verse 9 hallelujah which i believe is going to be no verse 8 verse 8 says 
uh, which of these the princess the princess the princes of the, the prince of this world knew for they had not known it they would have not crucified the lord of glory mm. there's a mystery and the devil or the enemies of jesus will never know the outcome of whatever they are doing mm. now let me say this on your platform that the devil or the enemy will never know the outcome of whatsoever they are doing they will never they will have a clue of the beginning but they will never know the full details of what god is doing and that is the mystery and that is what the enemy will always be defeated because in three days they thought that they are finished with jesus they were tribulating and they thought that they have ended the ministry of jesus christ but they didn't know the outcome of the death of jesus they didn't know they thought that they have slain him they thought that they have crucified him they have blackmailed him to the people they have damaged his integrity they pay people to lie about him so they thought that that is all but they didn't know the outcome man of god you see whatsoever the devil is doing he doesn't know the outcome god always hide the outcome from the enemies now let mm. me put mm. joseph joseph understood that what they are doing they were ending the dream of joseph but they didn't know that they they have become the instrument that god is using to to send joseph to the place of the fulfillment of his dream so the enemies of this and what i would say is that they didn't know the outcome and that the mystery goal will always hide from the enemy so i want to tell the listeners out there anything that the enemy is doing it is for your own advantage it is for your own glory because the bible says we know that all things work together for what good to them that love god so man of god the enemies of jesus and of the church and of the people of god they will never know the outcome anything they are doing man of god it is for our own promotion it is for our, our own promotion let me step by daniel you see the, the, the enemies of Daniel, man of God, they thought that they have lied to Daniel. They thought that where Daniel has been sent, there's no way Daniel can escape. There's no way Daniel can able to escape because they place him in the lion's den. So they, they were relaxing and jubilating that we have finished Daniel. We have destroyed him. He's dead than God. But they didn't know the outcome that God was with Daniel. You see here, we got to understand Daniel said the word that I love, man of God. He said that he said to the king, he said, King, God sent forth his angels to sack the mouth of the lion because I was innocent. Mm. I was innocent of the accusation. I was blameless of whatever they were accusing me about. So, man of God, they will never know the answer. They think that they are destroying you. They think that they are tarnishing your integrity. Man of God, permit me to you to say this. There, there is a man of God that I know I'm not going to mention his name. Somebody, somebody was paid to go and blackmail the man of God and to destroy his church. That nobody would pay attention to the man of God. And the person went and lied and, so, and said all manner of things against that man of God. And they published it on the newspaper. Now, man of God, to, you, to the surprise of the, the man of God, he prayed for one lady who was looking for the man of God for 20 years. The woman has no contact with the man of God. So when they published the man of God on the newspaper, the, the woman had the opportunity to, to see the newspaper. And when he saw the newspaper, he said, Ah, this is the man of God I've been looking for 20 years. This man of God has blessed me. I'm now rich and billionaire. I'm looking for him. To bless him and to help him so they thought that they, they were destroying the man of god but they didn't know that they were introducing the man of god to a contact that the man of god have lost for 20 years whatsoever the enemy is doing man of god at the end of the day it is going to reflect the glory of god it is going to bring the glory of god to the people that people know that we serve a mighty god if the man of god let me use you as an example look at what the enemies have, have done against you outside many accusations but we thank god for the invitation we thank god at the end of the day we have known that god is always with is is with his people they thought that they are telling you 
Look at the church, the building that you have bought for the Lord. It is bigger than the former. That's what I know that at the end of the day, the outcome is for our own benefit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So also for Apostle, what about the um, baby Christians, people who don't have all the faith and the belief you have, who are wondering, people are insulting our God. People are saying that Jimmy but God is silent. And they are wondering, the children, they are children that parents are telling them, accept Jesus, fear God. And they are hearing people insulting God and God is not answering. What do we tell such baby Christians and children? You see, man of God, I've seen people who have even done worse and at the end of the day, they are carrying the gospel now. They have become the frontiers of the gospel, preaching the word of God. I've seen people that they were armed robbers. I've seen people that they were killers. I've seen people that they were blasphemous, blasphemous against the word of God. But now, God has taught them and they are now preaching the gospel. All that we need, we have to encourage the baby Christian. That's why it is always good for us to come under his umbrella so that we can, they can be taught. The Bible says the early disciples, they continue in the teachings of the apostles. So I want to encourage people of God that let's continue in the teachings. That's where we can able to be strong and grow in the things of God. So uh, the baby Christians out there, we the people that we are strong and mature, we have to hold them. We have to encourage them. We have to become an example to them so that they will look onto us and they will know that no, they still need to hold their faith. They still need to stand firm and never be moved. So we have to become an example to them. If we are standing, it is a signal for them that our Christ is a stolen rock. And they that believe in him will never perish but have everlasting life. But nobody, man of God, can destroy the foundation. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Apostle Dr. Richard Kwekupaka, the voice of Toronto. Servant of God, um, other men of God, including Kumchacha, is waiting to speak. Okay. Can, you, can you pray for the listeners and the viewers all over the world before you uh, go? In it, amen. Man of God, before I pray, I would like to um, um, appreciate what you are doing in the body of Christ. We thank God for your life that in this end time you have become an instrument that God is using to touch many lives. I will, I will urge you to continue. Don't let the noise out there. Don't let anything bring you down. Because God has mandated you that such a time like this, you become a voice to the voiceless and become somebody that the people of God will look up to. May God bless you. Now, let me pray for the viewers. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that anyone that's listening to us this afternoon, any circumstances and challenges he or she is going through, we pray for divine escape. We Amen. declare divine escape in the mighty name of the Lord. Amen. Any networkings of the enemy, any satanic calculation, anything that have been planned to destroy humanity, let it be aborted and negated. We boomerang the act of wickedness. We destroy any evil encounter. I pray for the blessings of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray for the body of Christ. That in this time we shall stand stronger and march forward. Nothing can able to break us down. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let everybody say Amen. Amen. Apostle Dr. Richard Kakupaka. Servant of God, God bless you. Keep listening. Um, amen. God bless you. Kum Chacha is listening and he's so happy you are there. So Yami yeah, Shrawa. He's listening to you right now. He'll be joining us very soon. God amen. bless you. Yami Shrawa. I pray that you'll be very blessed for being here with us tonight. And after this service, we have a man of God also.